Tonight's session is about the idol of identity in dating. Now, I am not saying that, you know, having your identity in dating is a negative thing. But of course, as always, when something is prioritized in our life above Jesus, that's when it becomes unhealthy and when it can become an issue. So I hope you have come with your questions and your thoughts and feelings about this topic because I cannot wait to hear them. I'm going to jump into the scripture that is pinned in the chat. I'm not going to read all of these but I do encourage you to note them down and take them away with you and um, so that you can read them in your own time and reflect on this this week but again if you have any questions or comments feel free to put in the chat raise your hand and I will try and get to you as quickly as possible and of course if you are going to speak and um, just remember we are on time constraints so I really want to hear your wisdom but equally let's give everybody an opportunity to to share. Okay, so we're going to jump into the scripture, as I said, pinned in the top of the chat. And tonight I'm going to be looking and kind of jumping on from last week's session. So last week we talked about body image and kind of fitness. It actually really went down the identity route and hence why I've brought identity in dating specifically to this conversation this evening. But we're going to pick up in Proverbs 31 and I'm going to read it in full so um, uh, yeah just follow along if you have a bible feel free to read your uh, translation all translations are welcome here friends so proverbs um, 31 and it starts in verse 10 it says a wife of noble character who can find she is worth more than rubies her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value she brings him good not harm all the days of her life she selects wool and flax and works with eager hands she is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar she gets up while it is still night she provides food for her family and portions for the female servants she considers a field and buys it out of her earnings and plants a vineyard she sets about her work vigorously her arms are strong for her tasks she sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night in her hand she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers she opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy when it snows she has no fear for her household for all of them are clothed in scarlet she moves co coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes a seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments. She sells. She supplies. She is clothed in strength and dignity. She laughs at the days to come and she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household. She does not eat out of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. And of course, then it goes into talking about um, charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, um, but a woman that, you know, fears the Lord is honoured. And um, Alice, you put a comment, she, saw, she sounds knackered. Well, we're going to get into that tonight. And I'm glad you brought that up because last week I encouraged you that it's great to pursue boys, men, should I say, gentle men. It is great to pursue a Proverbs 31 woman. But any woman here on this screen tonight or in your life at church will tell you, we cannot physically be a Proverbs 31 woman right now, okay? We can be parts of it. We can be trying to run towards it. But Proverbs 31 doesn't just say, this is what the wife is and the men do nothing. It actually tells us about the husband as well. It tells us because of the wife's character, what does the husband do? He's respected. He doesn't have to question her faith. He can trust her with anything that um, she brings. And you know what? She brings her best. He brings her best and they are a team. And you can see that because the next generation, the children say, blessed are you. <laughs> we see our dad is encouraging our mom. Our mom is encouraging our family. And so we can go in the Lord. I wonder what that looks like for you today. Did you come into the session and you're thinking of identity and you have all these, you know, 
things in your head about what a woman should be of God or what a man should be of God or I won't date such and such if this is a red flag, beige flag, green flag. Oh my goodness, there's so many flags on social media at the minute and, you know, telling people who they shouldn't be and telling people who they should be and, you know, uh, have high standards, but don't be too picky. I don't know what you came in with tonight, but I hope that these scriptures and as we chat and have conversation and answer questions, that you'll be encouraged to think broader than just salt and a dating app. To think of how you go into dating, your perception of dating. Do you see singleness as a gift? Do you reflect singleness as a gift on your profile? Do you see marriage as a blessing, but not the be all and end all? Do you see dating as an opportunity to come and to hear other people's perspectives of faith, to see their background, to see how God has planted them and to sow seeds in your relationship, but also to inspire others that, you know, no matter what season you're in in your life, tonight we're talking about dating, that it is powerful, it is positive, but it's because of God that we get to receive that today. So let's look at our second um, kind of group of passages of scripture. Again, it's in the chat. It's pinned. So, you know, um, make sure to, to have a look at that. Um, I am going to try and keep up with the chat as much as possible, but I do apologize if I'm a bit slow, uh, but I will try my best. So let's jump to 1 Corinthians. And we're kind of picking up again on last week a little bit, but it's 1 Corinthians 6 and 7, I do believe. So let me see. Okay, so last week we looked at um, the passages in chapter six about sexual immorality, but we actually looked at it deeper than just the face value and the context. I'm not saying we should, you know, scrap what Paul is speaking into. I think context is really important, but I also think that we can apply it to other parts of our lives. And we looked at it and we said, actually, our body is what? Our body is a temple. So yes, Do not stray into sexual immorality. But why? Because your body is beautiful. Your body is a temple. God has great plans for your body and your character and the choices you make, no matter what stream of, you know, sin that is and maybe what stream of sexual immorality you're thinking of right now. It's not going to be a positive thing. You know, you're not going to come away from looking at porn and going, oh, I feel refreshed. That's great. Amen. No, you're going to come away from looking at porn or you're going to come away from having sex, you know, on the daily. And you're going to judge or, or prejudge the person that you're next intimate with. And I'm not saying, you know, that just because you're thinking that you're wrong and you're the sinner and nobody else thinks that. No. But what I am saying is, look what it says in chapter um, 6, verse 18. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against who? Their own body. In other words, you are not helping yourself, (laughs) you know because you're going to carry that experience. You're going to carry in the best way possible that baggage, that suitcase that you have into the next relationship you have, into your idea of dating, into maybe your um, perception of singleness is a negative thing and I have to get away with it because marriage is secure. Marriage is the be all and end all. Guys, I'm 25. I'm single. You know, I'm not married, okay? I maybe won't be able to speak into marriage in the same way that some of you would be able to. But here's the thing. I think I'm pretty good at the whole singleness thing. (laughs) Or God has definitely taught me some things along the way. And so let's get into chapter seven because time is running away from us as always. Remember, put your questions uh, and things into the chat and and feel free to stick up a hand if there's something you'd like to to share. Okay, actually, I'm just checking the chat here for a second. It says, Jill said, how is fleeing possible in a world full of the internet? I love that. I'm going to come back to that, but I am going to jump into 1 Corinthians 7 and read that first, if you don't mind. So we're going to pick up on verse 14. I am going to kind of summarize some parts of it, but again, go and read in your own time. So verse 14 says, for the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife, 
and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother or the sister is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in what? Peace. How do you know wife whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know husband whether you will save your wife? The reason why I have picked up there is because I want you to go and read that whole portion of the chapter and see what it says about the married, what it says about the unmarried and how Paul encourages them both. But equally, some of you may have walked into Christianity and you may have already married somebody before you became a Christian. And maybe your partner doesn't believe in Jesus. And you're thinking, oh, well, the Bible tells me to break up. The Bible tells me that. No, God can work through any marriage. Okay. So maybe you're sitting here and for you, you are divorced from your previous marriage and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I'm never going to be able to go into marriage again. I'm so impure. I'm not great. Blah, 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 blah. No, just stop yourself right there. Okay. Your identity is not in what you have experienced, what you are experiencing or going to. Your identity is first and foremost in God. But what does it also say? It says, if an unbeliever leaves you or decides to leave, then see it as God's peace. See it as what can I bring into this situation to show God, to show light, to show understanding. Um, Stephen says, if your partner doesn't understand Jesus, he or she will not understand you. That is true. That is true. But at the same time, you can also, you know, speak Jesus into their lives. I've seen it done before. I'm not saying let's flirt to convert this evening. That is not what I'm saying. But I am also saying that we shouldn't just fight. You shouldn't be equally yoked. End of discussion. Because we need to appreciate that the church is more than just, you know, never been together intimately with somebody before marriage. There are many, many people who come into marriage who have, unfortunately, maybe their purity has been taken away from them maybe they you know chose um a life of sexual sexual intimacy with their partner and then find Jesus maybe they were with the Lord and they strayed and they came back so I want to be able to speak to everybody in this but I would encourage you you know yes you should think about the people that you're going to marry yes you should be intentional with you know who you are pursuing and why you are pursuing them but a marriage is more than sex okay and so if you are in your identity and dating going I'm not going to be with anybody that hasn't had sex before I'm sorry friends I'm really sorry to tell you that that might be very slim (laughs) that you actually might come across people that didn't choose to be sexually intimate with somebody but because of the world they lived in and because of the sin around them that is what's happened to them so let me encourage you also to be open-minded Let me encourage you to read scripture and to see the context which Paul speaks into, but also see the world that we live in and have an appreciation that there is no condemnation in Christ. Okay, I want to come back to that question if I can find it in the chat. So how is fleeing possible in a world full of the internet? That is a great question. Um, I'm going to butcher this. I'm so sorry. Is it Missy or Miss I said, flee, run like Joseph from the area of sexual sin that you are the weakest and have the greatest. Yes, you can flee from it. I encourage that. Um, Proactively though, here's a question for you guys in the chat. How do you flee well? How do you flee well from sexual immorality? what would you say to somebody? If somebody asked you that question and said, hey, I'm really struggling in this area of, for example, I'm addicted to porn and I can't get out of it and it's affecting my identity, it's affecting my perception of dating, how do you encourage them to flee the Jesus way? So Elle has said self-discipline. Okay, okay, I like it. Did somebody put their hand up there? Uh, Maybe they didn't, I'm not sure um yes there we go hang on hello can you hear me hey can you hear me i can okay i just wanted to like answer your question i hope that my 
my accent is making it like super clear because people find it difficult to hear me. But I think that from your question on how to flee from like uh, sexual immorality, mm-hmm. I think the the first step to this is actually to get closer to God. I mean, this may not be like the what people call practical step, but mm-hmm. that is the first step to actually get into it. You need to get to know God more and understand that whatever um, pain is commanding us to do is mm-hmm. for our own benefit, mm-hmm. right? And then the second aspect of this, when you mean flee, is to avoid any appearance of evil, just like the Bible commanded. Mm-hmm. Um, during the session last um, yesterday, a particular person was um, commenting on this, something surrounding this. And when you mean flee is that if you know your ability, you can decide to actually just go and say, I, I can do it. Um, mm-hmm. I can think about my past relationship and I'll be like, okay, I'm going to sleep over at this place. I can do it. Nothing is going to happen or something like that. But that is just me literally walking into, into sin instead of resisting it and moving so far away from what can tempt me into walking into sin. So if it's hugging too much or, or kissing that can actually arouse that desire, just like mm-hmm. the Bible says, we should not have those um, passion before it is, uh, I don't know exactly how he says it. So I think that fleeing is getting closer to God and helping him to, to help, telling him to help you to, to stay pure. Mm-hmm. But also, it is also conscious. We have faith. That is why we work. So we have faith that God is going to help us to be able to achieve sexual purity. But we also, we shouldn't put ourselves in situations that can lure us into hate. And just like someone said in the comments, like Joseph, he fled the thing. We got like, he even left his clock on, on whatever, maybe his bed or something, just to leave it. So any appearance of evil should be something that we should avoid when we, are, when we want to stay sexually pure and avoid sexual immorality as Christians. So, yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. That was really, really strong stuff. Loved it. Thank you. Okay, I can see some more hands are up. Richard, I'm going to come to you um, because you were next on my list. Richard, hi. Can you hear me? Might take you a few minutes to get your audio. Yep. Okay, as you do that, really, really love that um, conversation. I love the fact that you said it's a conscious effort. And that is that is what it is. You know, uh, we cannot do this alone. We must run to God first. And so if you are proactive in how you want to establish yourself in Christ, then that's where, you know, the fleeing comes because you are not fleeing to something else. You're fleeing to God. You're looking up. Richard, I think you got your sound on there now. Yes, I am. You hear me now? I can. Okay. Yeah, all those are great. But what I will tell you that is going to be even more beneficial Mm -hmm. is submitting to one another, finding another prayer partner that you can confide in, that you can talk to, that will hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. You hold each other accountable because I am going to tell you, in, of, and by yourself, you're not going to do it. But when you have someone else that you can trust and you're accountable to them and they're accountable to you and together iron sharpens iron and you make each other stronger on your own. It's near impossible. Yes, you can pray and Christ can can come and intercede and help you. But having someone there that you can go to to hold you accountable is the extra that you really do need. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, I would say like both of those points really come in together, don't they? It's kind of like the perfect formula. It's have God at the center, have boundaries in place, have somebody in your church to be accountable. Richard, who would you encourage? Say there's somebody here and they're still watching church online. How would you encourage them to find that person to be accountable? Who should that person be? Um. If they're not willing to step out into a church, I know that in our church, we do recommend people just reach out to us. Let us know where they're at so we can communicate with them. And one of the pastors or someone can be in touch with them. Mm -hmm. So reach out. You have to reach out. That's part of it. If you're not going to go to physical church, 
reach out. I mean, these online services should have a method of communication where you can reach out to. We are here in Stroudsburg and we do have a number of people that only go online. Mm -hmm. And the pastor has said throughout the services, send us a note. Let us know what you need. We'll have someone reach out to you. Yeah. And that's important. For you. And that service is not getting that from where you're at. Find a service that's going to reach out to you and let you communicate with them via text and email. And you'll have someone who can reach out and you can talk to. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much, Richard, for sharing. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> really, really good stuff. And also, actually, on the back of that, too, guys, what's really important is that if you're somebody who's struggling, particularly a male, do not reach out to a woman to be accountable. And I'm not saying that women don't have wise advice. I'm not saying that women could not, you know, speak into it. It's because if you're having a problem with attraction or you're having a problem with, you know, sexual sin, a woman is not going to be able to speak life into you in the same way that your male counterpart could and girls vice versa. And please, for heaven's sake, do not go to the person you are attracted to to and then tell them you know all of that i'm not saying not be honest with them but what i am saying is please be very very acutely aware of if you are struggling is it somebody who's going to help you get out of the struggle not carry you but help you get out or is it somebody who's going to actually cause you to go deeper whether conscious of that or not dependable partridge i see your hand is up so i'm going to make you a speaker and um, if you want to check your audio there Praise the Lord, everyone. Hello, how are you? What would you like to share? Um, yeah, I would like to share, like, uh, the example of the verses you have shared with us. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a, a very important point when we are choosing our partners. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, when I begin to chat with someone, my first question is, how is your faith? Mm. It, must, it really matters to me because the, the Bible, you don't need to separate with your partner because yes, it's a hundred percent quality. Because we, as believers, we are made as ambassadors. We have mm. to reach out to make sure all people have known Christ in their mm -hmm. And uh, Concerning the point of it is not allowed, if you can't really manage it, please, yeah, there is a way we say you can, you know, it's very tempting and it's very hard, but we are allowed to go back to ourselves first. You can say, God is taking me this side. I feel like mm -hmm. it's going further. So really getting vulnerable to Christ Jesus and say, let your grace be upon me. Let yeah. me go further. Let me be straight, not going this way and this way, uh, uh, straight from your word. Yeah. It will really happen because it's only in fasting and prayer. And you can also request to your, they are also like, the Bible says, if you feel get over it, you have to ask ask other people. They are elders. They are mm -hmm. People in church who have already, who knows such things. I talk to them and say, please, could you please help me in this area? I would like to fast and pray about this. The devil is taking me the other way. You know, once mm -hmm. you confess it, the devil will actually leave you yeah really good point really, really 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 good point the yeah. god and the devil cannot coincide together and so if god is yeah. in you, the devil must flee yeah once you confess it and say friend elder i need your prayers please mm. come on join me mm. i need to fast yeah 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 about this you have confessed and the devil can yeah i really thank God for the grace that uh, many people find it difficult alone, but other people can 
also fail to confess it to others. Yeah. Yet, if we talk to a friend, I trust in Christ and say, please, it's taking me this way. Can we pray yeah. about it? Taking, yeah. I feel I can't go further here. It's taking me this way. Can, can you please join me? Eh? We pray about it. And for sure, I'm telling you the truth. Once yeah. I, I confess it and we pray together, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. gone. It's over. Yeah, so, so I thank good. Jesus. Thank you so much for sharing. Guys, there's nothing you will ever say that I will judge you or say, you know, you're wrong. I may, you know, keep you accountable to what you say. Um, but this should be a safe space for conversation. You know, this should be a place of encouragement. Um, and the chat is going wild. I absolutely love it. Keep your questions and, and thoughts coming. Uh, equally, if you want to share, we'd really love to hear from you. Um, I did see it in the chat. It's It's gone from view now. But somebody made a really good point about when we were growing up in the church. And, and even now, actually, there's this maybe stigma. Um, and I don't want to go into this like really deeply. But there is a stigma around sex before marriage and dating. And that, you know, maybe I don't know maybe you had a really positive experience of this however I grew up in a more traditional church and I no longer are, are with them um I'm actually in a more kind of Pentecostal church now but um I grew up thinking oh my goodness sex is an evil sin and I'm going to go to hell if I have sex and so I cannot have it but nobody actually told me why Nobody told me the value of this is why Paul is encouraging you and the Bible encourages you to strive in your singleness, to see the opportunity, to see purity as a beautiful thing. Like your body, your body was made to be intimate with other, with a, your person, with a, another person. And so just because it's you know we i've read the scripture before but just because you say it's beneficial doesn't mean it is not everything in life is beneficial yes it's going to be gratifying yes it's going to feel great because that's what your body you know was born to do we were born to create more life but imagine what it could look like when you come with your other half and you say we are one we have declared we are one in God and because of God we get to be intimate we get to see the beauty that God has created us to be and, and to celebrate each other in marriage in safety in connection and go deeper because I guarantee you, nobody who has been married, who is following the Lord will ever say, hey, I should have just had sex before marriage. <laughs> They'll tell you, yes, it didn't maybe feel great at first, but we've worked on it and we see the beauty of it. We see it as a way of connecting, a way of showing God wow it's not just an action it's so much more than that i see a comment there it's about the rebellion and lack of discipline god wants to correct us he is protecting yes he is he's protecting you by you know putting these steps in place if god says i don't command you to have sex before marriage then you don't have it he never says that he says i would rather you not be equally or unequally yoked but you have a choice as Adam and Eve had a choice to eat the fruit in the Garden of Eden. Everybody has a choice, but not every decision we make is valuable. Okay, um, I see your hands up there. Um, I will make you a speaker. Guys, just a conscious of time here as well. So um, I'd love to hear your thoughts, Em, but let's keep it slightly uh, briefer. Just let everybody have their share. But Em, what would you like to say? Yes, good afternoon. I will be brief. You know, what I thought to myself in regards is that, um, that yes, premarital sex and also illicit sex, not just premarital sex, but mm -hmm. everything from homosexuality to bestiality, all these different strange aberrant behaviors are actually mm -hmm. forms of pagan worship that many people don't, don't realize. So when they're engaging in these, in these acts, whether it be premarital sex, homosexuality, bestiality, whatever, they're actually, they're actually worshiping another God. And so when we look at pornography, even prostitution, it's a it's a form of worship, and mm -hmm. so.
that's really good that's a really really good comment to share um thank you so much that is so awesome we've had you a few times on him and honestly every time you share i'm so excited to hear what god speaks through you because it's so good and as an encouragement to everybody else you know um speak up we'd love to hear your voice um on the back of that actually if you would stay here for a couple minutes i just want to ask you a question on the back of that how then do we worship the lord well in dating how would you encourage people there i would say to love people to recognize that people are our brothers and sisters first and foremost Mm -hmm. and that in doing so that we treat them like brothers and sisters somebody may not be for you they may not be the chosen one but they're still Mm -hmm. made in the image of god so I see people, men and women, you know, I see women doing it, but I see men doing it too, that they find somebody and they feel this person's not the one and they treat them like a dog. They've cast them away, like use Kleenex. And so God doesn't want you to do that. God wants you to still be mindful of that human being's feelings. They may not be the one for you. They may not be attractive to you, but uh-huh. you can't throw them aside like, like they're garbage. You should still speak to them and still encourage them, you know, yeah. to, to go forward in life, you know? Yeah. So good. Thank you so much for sharing. That was really, really awesome. Thank um, you, guys. <laughs> so guys, I'm going to go back to the scriptures. As I said, it's pinned in the chat. Feel free to uh, go and read them in your own time. Note them down because I will be pinning <laughs> another message in a couple of minutes. But I want to read Ephesians 5, 21 to 33 with you. Um, and it, the title is Instructions for a Christian household so it says this submit to one another out of reverence for christ wives submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the lord for the husband is the head of the wife as christ is the head of the church his body of which he is the savior now as the church submits to christ so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything husbands love your wives just as christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy cleansing her by the washing with water through word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself after all no one ever hated their own body but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. And for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife and the two become one flesh. I wonder if you ever thought of it that way. You know, this this passage of scripture is read out often in wedding ceremonies, Christian ceremonies particularly. And I know myself a couple of years ago when my cousin was getting married and I had family members who were at that wedding you know, they are, aren't a follower of Christ. And what they took from that is, oh, the wife should submit and the husband should just rule. And that's not what it's saying at all. What it actually is saying is, wives, you are your partner's tag team. You go hand in hand because of God. Wives, you get to submit to your husbands. Husbands, you get to lead your wife. But that's not the end of the conversation. You get to lead your wife because Christ is your head. He is leading you in the best way possible. He allows you to have the body you have. Last week, we talked about Psalm 139 and how God intimately knits us together in our mother's wombs, that we are not a mistake. And so marriage is about a unification of two people coming together, but it takes work. Just because, girls, we have that ring in our finger and we're like, shabam, here's the diamond, doesn't mean that it stops there. Actually, it starts there if it hasn't already started in dating. Because that's the point where you say, wow, wow, God has allowed this man to see potential in me and I get to be his partner. I get to unite with him. We get to bring children into this world if God bless us in that way. No matter how he blesses us, we get to do this life together as one because I get to go for God and he gets to go for God. And when we both look up, well, when we go out 
we go out in abundance and that's not going to be easy and it's not going to be great but I think what's really important going back to what we said last week is that when we think of our identity in dating actually as we look at profiles on salt and we think nope 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 why don't we take some time to pray over that person, to read their profile in full, to see what their character is like before we swipe left or right, before we say yes or no. Maybe you're not sexually attracted to them and that's okay. And I'm not saying that you have to be attracted and if you're not, you never should be with that person. But equally, do we take the time in our dating sphere to actually read somebody's profile and say, wow, that's a man of God. Wow, that's a woman of God. Or do we question and do we actually ask ourselves in a healthy way, where is that red flag? (laughs) Where is that beige flag? Oh, that intrigues me. I'd like to ask something about this or I'd like to ask something about that. But because of your identity in Christ, you get to ask those questions. Okay, Solomon, I see your hand up there. I'd love to hear what you have to say or if you have a question, please feel free to share it. I will make you a speaker. Hello, Solomon. Hi, Ali. How are you doing? Not too bad. Good. Um, so I just uh, wanted to, um, I, I just picked up on the point that you just said, um, the questions that we need to ask, um, mm-hmm. you know, the person who we're looking to marry, are they a godly person? Mm. So I think it goes back to, again, we we were speaking about about before. You know, if you have that lust and, you know, you've got that, um, you know, if you're having sex before marriage, Mm -hmm. it makes it really hard to ask those questions Mm -hmm. because, you know, you've got that lust element there. Uh But if you take that away, then it becomes easier to actually see you know you've got lost to one side now you can see that more you know how godly a person really is and Mm. then you can start asking the right questions so the point is that you know um it's it's actually uh, you know all of this being in the bible talking about no sex before marriage is actually a good thing it helps you pick um you know pick that right person for yourself actually that's Mm. what i think Love it. Really, really good stuff, Solomon. That is awesome. Yeah, I love that. I love the fact that you you really made the point there about the lust factor. (laughs) And we kind of spoke about it last week. Solomon, I'm going to make you a listener again, but thank you so much for sharing that lust factor of, am I putting a, a profile photo before the person? And so what does that look like when we take lust away, when we actually, for a second, set physical attraction aside, what do we see? Who do we see? Why do we see what they are and who they are? Are we intrigued to learn more? Or do we just think, hey, what a great brother and sister in Christ? Not for me, but amen. <laughs> and move on with integrity and with honor and with love. I don't think we do that enough. Regardless of what season we're in, what we're carrying, I don't think we identify as the honoring people of God. Maybe, you know, some of the people that hurt you the most are actually other Christians. That's not what God planned. That's not what God wants. But that's the reality of what we live in. So imagine if we took that loss factor away. But I do think, pal, it is important to be physically attracted to someone. But it can grow in time. And be open to that. Be open to seeing that grow in time as well. Um, Somebody else said something in the comments. Yes, cheerful order. I see your comment. Thank you so much for sharing it. I'm going to take that down and note that as maybe a conversation for, you know, another session. Because I think your question, we could go any direction with that. And I'm just watching the time. So thank you for sharing that. Guys, just a reminder on feedback. If you would like to give me feedback on this, a question maybe that I haven't answered, stick it in the feedback section and I will bring it up on my podcast that I have, and um, which is coming back, guys, this week, which is really exciting. So I'll put those details up in a second. Just want to share with you two little songs here um, on YouTube. I'm going to pin it for a couple of minutes and then obviously put my um, social media details up. And the reason why I do this is because these are two songs that I always sing over these sessions before we uh, kind of occurs. And I think this week, I really want to encourage you to go away and, and look at who you are, 
and see, can I declare these messages over my life? Because so often we worship, we say the words, but do we actually realize what we are declaring? Are we actually declaring it over ourselves? Are we saying, yeah, la, 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 but I don't really believe it. So I want you to be accountable with yourself this week. Listen to those two songs, pick one and make it the song of your week. Make it the the song of worship in your life. Maybe even use it as a means of prayer. Coming to God with the struggle of identity and dealing and saying, God, I don't know, but you do. And just pray it out and see how you get on. So I'm just going to put those songs up for another couple of minutes and uh, just making sure that we get through the chat. Dependable, uh, Partridge, I do see your hand up. and um, You're more than welcome to share again, but could we make it maybe a little bit shorter only because we have 15 minutes left and I want to honour time. But Dependable Partridge, please feel free to speak and share. I praise the Lord once again. Thank you for the opportunity once again. Uh, I want to be so quick. And the thing is, we are talking about the time. Really, we have to have quality time. The thing is, we are in a rush to get the mm-hmm. partner. You mm-hmm. know, yeah, anything that you don't prepare for anything, let it be in the worldly things. If you are studying, if you're seeking for a job, really, if you're going to go for an interview, you take your time. You revise yourself and you see how you're going to meet the, your employee. And the same applies to us. We have to take our time uh, in this field of searching. Don't mm-hmm. rush. Pray to God. Uh, read the Bible. At least ask for guidance, you know. Yeah. We don't need... Yeah, we don't... If, if it's like we get, we get on pressure, no, it doesn't work. Everything mm. that you give time takes time. It's really of quality. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Mm. No, that's so good. Really, really good. Um, I am definitely an ambassador of you know going against the hustle culture. Um, if you have never read <laughs> on hustling, you really should. There's two books I recommend: The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry and also to hell with a hustle so on my podcast I actually have gone through a devotional series on that book to hell with a hustle so I've pinned my social media above you can go and check it out as I say podcast is coming back this week so any questions that I don't get time to answer in this session or any of the sessions feel free put it in the feedback come over to Instagram Put it in the stories on Instagram because I always leave boxes and comments after each session. I want to hear from you. I want this to be as interactive as possible and I want you to go away and feel encouraged. Terry, you said something there. I can totally be attracted to someone and I see they aren't sound in Christ or there's other red flags. The attraction means nothing and I have no desire to pursue them with something or something with them. Yep, honestly, if you go away from it and you see, you know, red flags in um, their faith and maybe what they've said, that's probably a bigger red flag than attraction because right I'm going to give guys advice okay if you're on salt here's some advice I want you to take home this week fill your profile actually tell us tell us females who you are what are you about what do you love I know sometimes you can be nervous and you don't know what to say and girls I'm telling you this too girls fill that profile spam those men with information about your faith about who you love you know what your church is about tell them because otherwise people aren't going to know and you know gym photos love them but they're not the be all and down all and actually if people are struggling with lust that's not what they're going to love <laughs> you know so show your platform your profile as a means to who you are be silly with the photo photos if you go on my profile I have one I think of me pulling a funny face am I doing it for attention no I'm showing you that I'm a bit of an idiot but that's a part of my character and that's who God loves me and I would rather somebody see that funny silly side of me than to see me you know serious you know oh my goodness this is like my gym photo and oh my goodness this is me on top of a hill but it's no face or oh my goodness this is my cat show me with your cat you know, <laughs> just things that I want to encourage you with in your identity with dating. Have fun. 
when do we have to be so serious at the same time about dating? Yes, go in with intentionality. Yes, go in with enthusiasm and love. Yes, don't go into every, you know, chat on salt thinking, oh my goodness, this is my husband or my wife. But at the same time, go in open-minded and go in with, could this be? And let's pray over this person. Let's get to know this person. Let's be serious about who we say yes to and who we say no to. Your time is precious. Your time is important. And so what you spend your time doing, who you spend your time with is something that you're never going to get back. So do it with intention, do it with love. And for my single crew out here, guys, singleness rocks. Okay. I probably won't say that tomorrow. You may find me crying in a corner going, why Lord, why? But here's the point about singleness. It is a season you are never going to get back and you will never get tomorrow back, okay? So embrace it. Go full throttle with it. But if you feel like you are really struggling with your identity and dating, if you're really struggling with sexual desires, then maybe also pray over the fact of, am I ready to date God? Is there work to be done in me, God? Should I actually close that door for a little second so that I can, you know, be present with you? And then when you say yes, let's go. Somebody says, Ayo, I don't want to be single. Look, I get you. We don't, you know, I'm 25 and I've never been in a relationship. I get you. It sucks. You want to be off the single shelf. But at the same time, you want to jump off well. You don't want to, you know, have to slide off and slide back on again and be like, whoops, sorry, Lord. You want to be able to go into every season of your life, not saying, hey, I'm Ellie and I'm single, but hey, I'm Ellie, I'm 25 and I have this and this and this about my personality. Oh, and by the way, I'm single. You know, at the same time, don't be desperate. Nobody likes somebody who is desperate. So it's a lot to take in, a lot of information that I've thrown you away. Again, as I said, please, 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 you know, make sure that um, you have fun in dating and that you don't just consume your entire life on your identity off dating, but to embrace it and see what God does in it. Guys, if you have any questions or any other comments, this is your time to shine. Um, so Alice says, 25, I've been on and off the shelf so long. The shelf needs to be named, renamed Alice. Girl, I am with you. I love it. Um, you know what? Who cares? Age is a number, right? It doesn't matter. I have friends who got married at 19 and you think, oh, that's so great. And you really want to be stuck in the corner. And then you have, you know, other people that are in their 40s and be like, Oh my goodness, those 20 year olds do not have a notion. So I can understand, okay? I can understand the frustration. And I'm not saying frustration is wrong, but I'm also saying, guys, it's God. And when we run with God, we see the bigger picture. <laughs> and we see people not just as profiles, but we see people as God's creation, as those wonderfully made human beings that we get to run alongside, that we get to have conversation with. And if it goes to marriage, amen. If it doesn't, amen. You know? Okay, guys, any more questions or thoughts that you want to share? Raise your hand. This is your time. You have approximately like seven minutes, I think. So anything you want to kind of feed back on or you know talk about, let's have a chat. This is your time. Have I said anything that you think, eh, not sure? Pal, I see you say, why are the links not clickable? Oh, this happens every week. I am so sorry. So my Instagram is miss underscore e dot l dot a. And my podcast is called The Possible Perseverance Podcast. And we are on Spotify. I'm also starting on YouTube this week, which is so exciting, but also terrifying. Um, so hopefully that explains those links in the chat. Um, does somebody have their hand up there? Am I, am I missing missing a hand? Um, but yeah, if you have advice too, guys, put it in the chat. Would again, love to hear it. Um, I see a comment that we have the uh, expect that marriage isn't for all of us. Yeah, you can. I mean, 
hello, some of the best people in the Bible, aka Jesus Christ, didn't get married. But boy, did he have a life. <laughs> you know, he didn't sit and dwell. What did he do? He used it for the kingdom. You know, and yes, he was God's son. Of course, he was God. But he never did anything without intentionality. He always rested in God. So, yes, maybe. Maybe God has you to be single, but what an ambassador you can be in your singleness. You get to talk to people in a way that I can never talk to. And that's amazing. Um, oh, it's somebody's birthday. Happy birthday. Hope you're having a great day. <laughs> and 28 and happily single rather than be in a toxic relationship just for the sake of being in a relationship. Yes, I always say that. Better to be happy and healthy than to be in a relationship and you're struggling and you're going nowhere and you really don't want to be there and you know you just hate life no be happy be healthy and if that means you're single that means you're single if that means you're married that means you're married and as we said marriage is not sunshine and rainbows marriage is another season but it is also a hard season and a lot of people have to work on their marriage daily give it over to the Lord um okay let me see in the comments I think some people are popping off because people are from different places in the world which is awesome um okay let me see has anybody else got a hand or a comment they want to do or share I could look at another passage of scripture but we have five minutes so um do you know what let's go to let's do that let's look up John 15 and the reason why I put this in here and explain myself is because John 15 is what? Jesus is the vine. And who are we? We are the branches. So we are integral to the tree. We get to be resourced by the kingdom and by the roots, the nourishment of God. But we can't do it alone. Or if we can do it alone, be expected to fail, be expected to fall, because that's not who God made us to be. God made us to be in communion with him and in united uh, form of the body of, of Jesus. So let me see, 15 then. Yes, here we go. Um, Just a couple of verses here. Who's the gardener? The father. So Who's got the answer to your, you know, identity crisis in dating or your singleness woes or your marriage woes? God, because he put you there. Um, where does the fruit come from? It comes from God. What happens? Every person, every person needs to be pruned. And there is fruitfulness in pruning. Because if you allow God to prune your life, you bear fruit in him. You can have nothing, but with God, you have everything. And verse seven, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So I hope that's something you can take away today. Ask, seek, knock in Jesus' name, and you will find. Okay, three minutes. Solomon, I'm going to give you the floor, and then we're going to pray. <laughs> so, Solomon. Hello again. Hi. Uh, right, so I just uh, wanted to say, um, you know, um, that we li we live in a society and, me and media and everything. They promote sex a mm. lot, you know, so sometimes it becomes really hard you know and, and you've got a lot of temptation but i think um that verse that you just read you know mm -hmm. if you remain in me and my words remain in you ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you so yeah. we need to just bring glory to god you know yeah. in times like this and just remember that you know um he's there for us so he, he's he's gonna work in our favor so good yeah so, so that's good. all really Amen. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, God is going to work in your favour. And God doesn't have favourites. Amen. So we are all accessible to God and we all get to be in union with God today. Okay, two minutes, guys. Does anybody have a question or a comment before I pray? Uh, Celia, I bear fruit discussing our faith, not dating men. I just don't know or I'm able to trust a man as a husband. 
pray that out to God. Pray that out to the Lord and he will tell you where you're at. He will tell you where his heart is at with that. God will give you the eyes to see people as they are. And he will also give you the eyes to respect your past, to see your past as part of your testimony, but also with the heart of the past to be able to release you and to equip you to be the wife, to be the husband in God's timing that you get to be. Because Ecclesiastes 3 tells us that everything has a time. But if you run after it and it becomes unhealthy and it becomes an idol and that's all you hold on to, it's what? It's meaningless. But because of God, you get to see meaning today. Okay, love the enthusiasm about prayer. I'm going to pray us out because I really want to to honour God in this session. So Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you because of who we get to be in, in your grace and in your love. God, we pray over this conversation. Would you just keep this in our hearts and our minds this week, God, that we are reminded that we are your temples, that our body is made in the image of you. And so our identity is unfounded by you. We are made with, for, and full of purpose, God. And so would you remind us that if we are starting to slip into seeing our identity as just singleness, just married, just as so-and-so's wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, God, would you reestablish that today in your name? Would you remind us that we are more than that? We are more than our relationship status, God. We are more than beige, green, red, whatever color of flag. We are your kingdom builders. We are your ambassadors. And so God, would you show us that identity is found in you, that idols are not off you, But because of you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, today we get to be the people that you have created us to be. So we just pray it all, God, and we ask, would you let your will, your will be done in our lives here today on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.